Hey guys, Nate here from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Uh, this video I want to dive into Cubase's preferences and just hunt down a few little features and uh, settings that we can tweak that for me personally make uh, my life a little bit easier when working in Cubase. So let's jump in and check them out. Right, let's dive into our um, preferences and I'm just going to point out a few little uh, tweaks that you can do to Cubase that for me just save me a little bit of time or just make things a little bit easier. Uh, we'll just start through the top. Um, let's look at editing first and the audio section. Um, first things first, the auto automatic hit point detection is handy to have on. It will automatically just find the peaks uh, for your files in case you want to slice up loops, etc. Then um, the other one that you want to look at is the on import audio files. Uh, I like to get rid of this. Um, it's really annoying every time you import something and a dialog box comes up and you have to uh, edit that. So you can actually set up your uh, settings beforehand. I always copy files to the working directory. I don't split multi-channel files and convert and copy to project if needed. Let's say if you're going to import an mp3 file it needs to be converted to WAV and generally speaking if it needs to be done then just let Cubase do it. So we'll just enable that. So when you Im import files now there won't be any dialog box that opens up and annoys you uh, asking for input from you. Now the other uh, editing in the editing section here, there's another thing that you can tag on is the parts get track names. Um, this is handy for events, um, uh, not audio files specifically, but when they're inside an event, um, if you move this down to drum loop two, for example, it'll automatically rename those parts um, to drum loop two. I just like that from an organizational point of view. Uh, I like to have all the tracks named correctly. Uh, so I always leave that enabled. The big one for me is under the tool section. Um, this by default in Cubase is actually enabled. And what that does is it gives you this little toolbar on a right click, which is kind of pointless to me really because you have that available here anyways. And they also map to keys one through nine, I think, or all the way up to zero. So they're really pretty easy to get to. And furthermore, if you disable um, pop-up toolbox and right click, what you then get is a context sensitive menu. Um, so you can see here, a, a right click on an audio file, you have the tools anyways, and then it gives you a whole bunch of other options like uh, applying plugins directly by offline, uh, dire, uh, offline processing. Um, all your reverse silence, uh, pitch shifting is available there. Um, quantize settings, render in place is available there if you haven't mapped it to a shortcut already. And then um, if I create a MIDI file, uh, you'll see that uh, the context sensitive menu actually changes and we then get MIDI specific functions like uh, logical presets, functions for MIDI velocity, all that kind of stuff. So you've got so much more functionality available on a, on a right click if you disable that. So definitely highly recommend you do that in your Cubase preferences. Right, moving on. I'm a bit of a stickler for um, colorizing tracks and keeping everything organized. So there's a handy little function here. Um, this is quite nice to be able to set up as well. You can actually apply your track colors a little bit to the uh, sidebar here as well. Um, but what I'm more interested in is uh, setting this to use previous track color plus one. Now I have a custom color map, so I have a, a ton of different colors all neatly mapped out here. Uh, what this does is when you create a track, say an audio track for example, so there's our audio track. If we colorize this one, uh, just find our colors and uh, let's set this to let's say this greeny color whatever um, when we add subsequent tracks to this now say for instance if I want to load up a bunch of audio tracks for loading in some drum samples and stuff into um, when I create the rest of these tracks uh, especially if I do multiple tracks in one go they'll all be neatly colorized in different shades uh, of that color that I started off with. 
Um, it doesn't look so great when you've got just Cubase's default colors because they only give you a small handful of colors, but when you've got a nice, uh, nicely laid out color map like this, um, it looks pretty nice and it saves you a lot of trouble having to go and colorize all these things afterwards. Great, so let's just check out a few more preferences. Let's go down to Media Bay and we're going to come to this when we look at sample tagging in a bit. But um, you want to make sure that this is set to a high value. Uh, the reason being that um, when you start tagging samples, if your value is not high enough um, according to the, the total amount of samples in a specific sample CD that you're going to be tagged or sample library that you're going to be tagging, um, when you hit Control A to tag the samples, you won't actually be selecting the entire library. So you'll find tags that'll go missing and so on. So I, I prefer to have this set to a high number. I have it set to 100,000, which is usually enough to cover any sample library that I throw at it. And then, I sorry, I just want to shoot back up to uh, editing again. There's two that I missed there. Um, the... Uh, Cycle follows range selection tool is extremely handy to have um, enabled. Um, so, generally speaking, you would uh, set your markers up the top like this. Um, they're a bit of a pain though if you want to select, say for instance, just the section inside of it. You've then got to move these across and then do that. Or you've got to cut a section out of your audio and then hit the P key to set your select uh, your range to the specific event. Um, what this does is if you select your range tool, uh, wherever you select will follow the loop uh, automatically, which is a really nice little um, uh, feature to have enabled. Right, and then lastly, um, it's not so much a setting that you want to change, but we're going to cover uh, some editing modifiers as well. And um, this is just a, a good spot to just come and have a look uh, at what you can do with each of the actual tools available to you. So they will have uh, modifiers that you can actually change the functionality by holding down the Alt or, or uh, Control keys. And we're going to cover this uh, in more detail, but uh, just a good little place to just see what you can um, do in addition to their standard functionality. So anyways, that's uh, just a few little things that you can do in the preferences to s just smooth out your workflow a little bit. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff that you can go through here and adjust according to your personal preferences, but uh, these ones are just ones that I felt uh, were worth highlighting. Great, I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.